What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, we have a brand new roadmap, or I shouldn't say brand new, but an updated roadmap for Splinterlands. Uh, this update is coming to you on July 29th, posted by Hardpoint in the official Discord, as well as a couple of notes. So before we actually jump into the details here, I wanted to go into into the uh, the notes and just kind of quickly summarize them. So we got four points here. The first of which is that tech modernization and the non-card market have been retitled with the heading of land, just to illustrate that these are required, or as he says here, prerequisites for delivering land. They've talked about this before. We knew that they needed to come in, but they're putting it all under the land banner now. Speaking of land, phase one, which is point number two here, phase one has been pushed to Q4. So surprise, surprise, but... <laughs> You know, again, I, I mean, I get it. I know that things are difficult and I think everyone should just be everyone should just be patient. We know this stuff is coming. And if you if you are seeing the amount of development and the amount of releases, just we're, we're almost there, guys. And I know I've, it's it's been a rough year with a ton of delays, but I would say we just got to make sure we're staying patient and know that this stuff is going to come and expect more delays. But hopefully this stuff is going to come sooner rather than later. And as I've said before, I know that many people on the team are working very diligently towards this. So it's definitely disappointing, but uh, very excited for what is to come with land. All right, number three, they've broken up the SPS validators on the roadmap into three deliverables. So you got the private net, test net, and public, public net. I think those are all pretty uh, self-explanatory, but uh, we'll do a little deep dive once we get into that into the actual roadmap. And then the last thing is that they have added a phase one of SPS governance to the roadmap for a targeted delivery of Q3. So they said the good news is that the community submitted proposals are the final destination, um, or at least, I'm sorry, Splinterlands will initially author the proposals, but the uh, good news is that the community submitted proposals are the final destination. So hopefully we will get there uh, maybe later this year or probably early next year. But the governance phase is coming soon uh, and the governance utility coming to SPS is going to be here very soon. So I am excited about that and I hope many other people will be as well. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, I'm going to skip over the 2022 stuff since that is already here, but it is it is important, I think, to recognize that the team has delivered quite a bit. All right, so going into the Ranked Rewards update, we've already gotten so much with Ranked Rewards, but upcoming, we do have Ranked SPS Rewards, uh, battle, Ranked Battle SPS Rewards, um, and then the Season Rentals is something that they have mentioned, and they have and more here. 50%, I don't even know if these numbers are, are good, so I'm not even going to comment on the 50%, 75%. I mean, sure, 50%. I It feels as though we're going to get there in August, and if this is a Q3 deliverable for the team, I would expect it here no later than the end of September. So um, I, I think that now that the airdrop is done, we're starting to see where the economy is going to go, and it seems as though the economy is somewhat stable, but I want to give it like a, almost a week, maybe sometime early next week, I'll, I'll check in to see where uh, the asset values have gone. And, and where where we've gone, I guess, as a, as a community as a whole. But um, ranked battle SPS rewards, I think, are going to be a great addition. And uh, that'll also change the amount of DEC that's getting printed right now to make DEC a little bit more scarce. And then season rentals are something that I feel like they needed to put in as soon as they implemented that two-day minimum. So I hope we get that sooner rather than later. I haven't heard what is coming up for next Tuesday's updates uh, the, during the, the maintenance windows, but uh, hopefully we can get hopefully we can get the season rentals because I think that's that's something that I've been pushing for and hoping that we get. Okay, then let's just do both of these together. So we got the non-card market and tech modernization. Uh, both of these are under the land banner now. A lot of this stuff, so tech modernization specifically, I don't think it's going to really affect us um, on like a, a visual level. It seems as though what they're trying to do is on the back end, they're just trying to have everything be coded in a more organized fashion and a more standardized fashion. So that seems like it's almost done. 95% and once that is complete, you got the 75% complete non-card market. Now I think this is going to be huge uh, for people being able to trade assets within the game and not having to deal with Hive Engine. Now, Hive Engine isn't that difficult, but for people who are not familiar with crypto at all, 
like I'm familiar with crypto and Hive Engine still was like a learning experience for me. There was a learning curve there that I needed to get through. So I, I get it. And, and if this is supposed to be about frictionless crypto, I really think the non-card market will be a great area for people to be able to trade non-card assets, obviously. Okay, so let's make our way further down. Next, we have Rift Watchers, and this is sitting at only 55%. I'm going to go out on a limb here, guys. I mean, I, I have been saying that I think this is going to be... I think they want to release this before Splinterfest, which is Q4, technically, in October. So, I, you know, I, I know that they said they wanted to get it out in August, but we are already at the end of September. I'm sorry, we're already at the end of July, and uh, I think if they wanted to release it, because keep in mind, there's going to be a, uh, a pre-sale. And my thought process is the minimum pre-sale would be probably two weeks. Maximum would be one month if they if they do something similar to Chaos Legion. But again, this is a smaller set, right? So um, if they do that, then you kind of have to leave two weeks to a month before the actual launch of those cards, meaning people are able to play with them, right? So if they want this out in Q3, and I think they very much do, then I would... I wouldn't be surprised if we if we had to see at the earliest I could see a pre-sale beginning. Let me say this is mid-August, um, and that's that's like really really early. But with all of the comments from the team, I don't know that we'll get it until September. And again, I, I don't have any inside information here. I'm just this is all speculation. But I'm assuming because it's a smaller set, it'll have a shorter pre-sale, and maybe we get like a mid-September or like early mid-September, like second week of September is what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, uh, pre-sale uh, beginning and then that goes for two weeks and then end of September is when the launch happens and we get all these awesome new Rift Watchers cards. I, I just can't see that bleeding over into October with everything they have going on for Splinterfest. But maybe that maybe I'm just being optimistic. I don't know. Uh, but I'm sure if, if I'm feeling this way, I'm sure many people on, on the team are feeling this way in terms of not wanting to have different kind of events and releases bleed into one another. Okay, so uh, the SPS validators private net. So this is the first phase of this, and then you're going to see the test net and the main net. So SPS validators as a whole doesn't seem like it is going to be going live in 2022. Now, wh when we heard this, when we heard that they were going to try and get it for 2020, uh, or like Q4 of 2022, I mean... This was one of my big fears on why I didn't want to hold or I didn't want to give up SPS for the validators, right? Because there were potential delays and we just know how development can go, especially in the crypto space and especially with, with Splinterlands, right? So it was one of those things where I, that was one of the main uh, points of conversation, not just for me, but for many people in terms of the opportunity cost. Well, they changed that by bringing the rewards for vouchers early. You know how I feel about that. Still salty. But um, now we are going to get the SPS rewards uh, coming in by the end of August. So we've been told that that's going to happen regardless of whether the validators are ready to go. So if we're going to get that by the end of August, that means that the, the rewards for SPS are going to be delivered starting four months at least four months before we get the validators live on the mainnet now in between that time uh, it looks like they're hoping to have SPS validators on a private net start and this is just I think internally with the team QA uh, QA testing community testing this is uh, uh, probably open and maybe for Mavs I don't know how this would work but this is when they'll open up the code to everybody else and just make sure that they're testing it all out um, but because of the fact that the rewards are coming in in August, I think we will still see a good amount of sales on the notes. And when I say good amount, I mean we'll still see them selling, right? It's a trickle right now, but it will continue to move because there is a time frame for this. But now there is no opportunity cost. I mean, it's just a decision you have to make whether you'd rather be holding SPS or you'd rather be holding uh, you'd, you'd rather be holding a node. So. You know, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. I don't think that them breaking this down and actually the delay into 2023 is going to affect sales much, if you understand what I'm saying, because now all of the incentive is here already. And that brings us right into the next incentive, which is SPS governance phase one. So the validators are supposed to be a big part of this, but at least initially in this phase one, what uh, Hardpoint was saying is that the team is going to push 
uh, proposals out initially, right? So you will be able to vote on proposals made by the team for changes within, uh, I guess, within SPS initially, and then uh, ultimately the game later, right? Because you're going to have SPS validators and then Splinterlands validators at some point in the future. So I don't know what's included in these types of proposals for SPS governance, but my hope is that we can have a discussion and potentially change around some of the the tokenomics uh, and the LP rewards. And um, again, I, I, I don't I don't want any more SPS added. So when I say tokenomics, I'm just trying to say that we have like 1.8 million SPS per month sitting on the sidelines. And I would rather be using that than the DEC. Instead of printing 70 million DEC, I want us printing zero. I want us printing zero DEC, if that makes sense. Um, and just because I, I want to moon the price of SPS. I, I mean, there's I, I don't know how to tell you that without sounding super biased, but I am super biased. I would love if DEC, if the only faucet for DEC in the future is SPS or burning SPS, then that could see some major uh, upside potential similar to what happened with Terra Luna. But what happened to, with Terra Luna on the front side when the price is mooned, at least from what I'm understanding so far, there is no death spiral uh, because we cannot go the back way around. You can't burn SPS uh, or you can't burn DEC for SPS. So that's exciting to me. And I think the fact that they're going to get SPS rewards out in time for this voting means that if people have it staked in their account from winning, if there are these proposals, I don't know how many they'll be. I don't know how complicated they'll be. But if they're there, hopefully people will feel the, feel the, the kind of like sense of responsibility or the entitlement, whatever it is, to be able to say, oh, yeah, I have a voice, right? So maybe I don't want to sell off this SPS. Maybe I want to continue. I want to continue building up my stake within the game so that I could, you know, say X, Y, and Z or whatever I need to and, and have my voice be heard. So Q3 still has a lot within it. Now, if Rift Watchers gets pushed to Q4, that's probably the only thing that I can see happening. Um, again, I, I'm hoping that that is not the case because we've already seen land get pushed out. So if Rift Watchers gets, gets pushed out, there's still a lot happening with ranked battle rewards and SPS, and they haven't even put Brawl stuff on here. So that's something that I want to call out as well. Uh, so hopefully we'll get something with Brawls in the next two months before the end of Q3. Now, moving into Q4, we got three things listed here. And this is a change from last month because, or whenever the last update was, because I think it was only SPS validators that were in Q4. But that's been split out now into three areas. So we got the private net in Q3. What remains in Q4 is going to be the test net. So this, this will probably be a big back and forth with the team and community as we try to get things right with that. And then hopefully the main net will go live at some point in 2023. Uh, Splinter Fest is a big part of Q4. It's going to be right at the beginning in October. Now, for people who are not attending, uh, I'll be honest. I don't know. I don't know what the appeal will be for you um, outside of just you know like FOMOing, <laughs> FOMOing into like what the event is. And I, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that in a way to like offend anybody. I'm just wondering. Like this is a big part of what the team is doing, but. I guess what I'm trying to say is I hope that the team has some things in mind so that people who are not able to attend can engage somehow and feel like they're enjoying a part of Splinter Fest. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would hope that there are some online things or maybe some things within the game. Like, I, I don't know what just yet. It says something secret here, but I just hope that there are, are elements within the game that could be cool for people who are not able to attend Splinter Fest. And, you know, some of the ideas that I've thrown out in the past are like maybe, maybe like that weekend for that weekend alone, they just have like a double rewards for your ranked battles played or something. I, I mean, but then people who are at the event are like just going to be tied to their, their computers the entire time. Right. But I, I guess I'm just trying to think of like, what are, what are cool things that they could do for people who are unable to attend? Because obviously not everybody's going to be able to make it. And I would, I just want personally, I would want for Splinter Fest to be something that even if you can't make it, you can participate, uh, participate in a virtual way because that's the way the world is moved towards, right? Like we, we're all able to do that to a certain extent. Um, and so I just hope that they can do something like that to make Splinter Fest uh, kind of open and eligible and inclusive of everybody around the world. Uh, and then last thing for Q4 is land phase one. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we don't get any further delays on land. I mean, we've already seen this thing pushed back, but I'm going to assume that land phase one is going to deliver sometime in Q4. Keep in mind, we have five months before the end of Q4. because So even if they deliver this on December 31st, 
that means we're getting land. I, I don't think that it'll come that late. It seems as though there shouldn't be much happening after Splinterfest. Sure, you're going to have the validators, but in terms of like, you know, the non card market, land, uh, tech modernization, all this stuff should be done. Rift Watcher should be out and doing its thing. Ranked rewards, you know, there might be some tweaks here and there if the community is finding more exploits and, and, and working with the team to, to close those loopholes. Um, and then governance should be rolling as well. So it really, Q4 should just be about land. And uh, I think that if land is going to be as big as they say it will be, then this might be enough, right? If they can launch it, especially early, maybe like early November, then this could fill up Q4 for us, right? Because as we get to the second half of November, like really the last six weeks of the year, everybody's like on holiday and, you know, it's Thanksgiving here in the U.S., then you got Christmas in December. So I feel like the world just kind of slows down and I wouldn't be surprised to see things within the team, right? It's a company at the end of the day, things within the team slow down too. So I'm, I'm hoping that we don't go like all the way deep into December. Granted, we did get Chaos Legion launched on December 7th of last year. So, you know, they did have a major launch happening at that point, right? And we were still in the middle of, it was like the phase two sale that was beginning at that time. But my hope is that we do get land sometime in November at the latest. And that way we're able to just kind of celebrate the holidays and go through all the land stuff. Now, the other thing that's not on here, and uh, this this wouldn't be part of the roadmap. I'm not even going to get to the future stuff because this is just too far out. But um, <clears throat> the stuff that's not part of the land thing, or that's not part of the roadmap is when Chaos Legion potentially sells out. We have seen an uptick in in pack sales. And I'm not trying to fumble you in, right? That's not my job. But um, I am just saying that Agrode has said or provided data saying that November is a potential sellout date based on the metrics that they've shared. Whether that's right or wrong, I can't say. I'm just saying that that's been shared on official channels by the team. Right. I, I have been saying based on nothing. Right. Literally pulling this number out of my butt that um, I I feel as though we could probably sell out by the end of the year. Right. Just it'd be a nice little Christmas present for everybody if we sold out. So if that ends up happening, if that ends up happening where we get the packs selling out sometime in Q4. Things could get crazy again, similar to what Q4 or the back half of last year looked like. And I know we're getting away from the roadmap stuff now, but I guess the one thing that I will pull forward or talk about is rebellion. Because if we do get that sellout period, then the question becomes how much time in between the sellout of Chaos Legion and the launch of rebellion does the team want to give for asset price appreciation? Um, so with all of these things happening, Again, I don't know where everything is going to go, right, uh, in terms of like prices of tokens and values of assets and like all that stuff. I, I'm just saying that I'm I'm bullish on the game and I, I've stayed here through the brutal parts of this bear market, continuing to play, continuing to collect and build up my deck over time. And I hope that you guys have too. And if you're new here, well, then welcome. And I think that you're getting in at a great time because there's a lot of really cool things happening. So I don't believe that the period between Chaos Legion and Rebellion is going to look anything like the period between Untamed and Chaos Legion because the macro factors would have to be very, very similar. Maybe if we get a crypto run, right, that would be cool. But the global macro doesn't seem like it's there yet. Now, in September, we could get a pivot, right? And I know we're getting into politics now, but we're getting, we could get a pivot from the Fed before the, the you know, midterm elections here in the U.S., which could try to boost the economy a little bit. And if that does, you could find a lot of capital working its way back into crypto and, and, and giving it the jump start that it needs, right? And if crypto moves, then, you know, and, and we have all these things happening, then SPS and Metaverse and all this stuff would probably start moving too. Now, would it look like last year? I have no idea. Could it be? I don't think that would be as big, but maybe it could be. Maybe it could be even bigger. Who knows? Uh, but that's just kind of how I'm seeing the overlay of the macroeconomic factors onto what they have on the roadmap here. And if we do get that sellout sometime in Q4, whether it's November or maybe even December, I think that could make things really interesting towards the end of the year for asset prices and asset values as we head into 2023 and depending on when they decide that they want to release Rebellion. Because keep in mind, the last thing that I'll say on this and then we'll end the video is that Yabamat was talking about how he wanted Chaos Legion to last a year. So getting to October or selling out in November would mean that we've passed kind of that one year from the pre-sale. 
And so we had, I don't know, five months, four months between uh, Untamed and Chaos Agent. I don't know that the team would want to wait that long this time. The max that I could see them waiting is two to three months. But again, that's based on just my own personal, um, you know, my own personal intuition. But we will see if if we do sell out in Q4, I would think that we could potentially see Rebellion in Q1. And keep in mind, this used to be Q1, right? But now it just says future. So take take from that what you will. Uh, Rebellion used to be in Q1, but now it just says future. So it really just depends on how quickly the packs move. Um, and you know, we'll we'll I'll probably do another video covering that. I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to give it a full week before I, I dig into the. Uh, like, you know, the aftermath of what the airdrop has done. But we've definitely seen pack sales tick up in that time. And if we cross 10 million, I don't think 10 million is the big number just yet. But I don't think we're going to be as slow as we were before, if you know what I'm saying. I think that people are starting to feel the FOMO. They're starting to see a lot of things being delivered. And uh, and this could make it for this could make for a crazy end of 2022, which could be fun. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. I, I I'm this is too much hopium now. So I'm going to we're going to end it here. And I will, I will catch you all in the next video. And I will see you around the game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And we will continue the conversation there. Take care.